In this video we're going to see how to create the three simple shapes that were used for some lessons and how to get each one on its own layer. This was inspired by Karen, a student enrolled in the layers course. She emailed me and asked how I got those shapes onto a blank layer. I realized that if the students in the course made a file like that, they could experiment with some of the layers concepts on their own or even use it to follow along with the lessons. So let's go over to Photoshop Elements and get started. The first thing we need to do is create a new file. To do that, go up to the File menu and choose New Blank File. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-N on a Mac, or it would be Control-N on a PC. The New dialog box appears. The first field is the Name field. The new file will get the default name of Untitled 1, unless you type in a different name here. Let's give it a more descriptive name. It's already highlighted, so we can just start typing. I'll type in shapes. Looking at the rest of the dialog window, we can tell that it's set to create a 6 by 4 inch color document that has a 300 pixel per inch resolution and a white background. I'll click OK to close the box and accept the settings. When I do, we see our new document appear in the active image area, and it's just a blank white document. In the layers panel, we just have the background layer and it's filled with white. Let's add a new layer. I'll click on the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel, and a new blank layer is added above the background layer. Let's put the blue square on this layer. Now again, there's different ways to do this in Photoshop Elements, but I'm going to use selection tools to make these simple shapes. I'll make the rectangular marquee tool active by clicking on it in the toolbox. If I click and drag diagonally, it makes a rectangle starting where I first clicked. That will be the top left corner. Since I drag down and towards the right, where I release the mouse button will be the bottom right corner of the rectangle selection. But we want a perfect square, not a rectangle. So I'm going to deselect by pressing Command D on a Mac or it would be Control D on a PC. You can constrain the selection to a perfect square by holding down the shift key as you click and drag. So I'll press and hold the shift key and then click and drag diagonally again. And this time we get a square selection. Now all we have to do is fill our selection with blue and we'll have a blue square. To do that, go up to the edit menu and choose fill selection and the Fill dialog box appears. Click on the Use field, and from the pop-up menu, choose Color. That opens the Color Picker dialog box. Notice these three boxes labeled RGB. That stands for red, green, and blue. You can enter any whole number into these boxes from 0 through 255. So, first I'll click inside the red box, and I don't want any red, so I'll enter 0. Next, I'll click inside the green box to highlight the number. And it's already at 0, but if it wasn't, I could just enter 0 into it. And finally, I'll click in the blue box and enter the highest number that I can, which is 255. You can see a preview of the color in the little box up here. Now just click OK to close the color picker box and accept the change. Next, click OK to close the fill box and accept the change for that. And our square selection is filled with blue. Now I'm going to deselect by pressing Command or Control D. Let's change the name of the layer over in the Layers panel to something more descriptive. We can double click on the current name, which is Layer 1 to highlight the text and then type blue square and press enter or return to complete the change. Let's add another layer by clicking the create a new layer icon in the layers panel again. On this new layer we'll make the green circle. I want it to be about the same size as the square so we can use the square as a guide for making the circle. Make sure that the new layer that we just added is active. We can see that it is active because it's highlighted in blue over in the Layers panel. In the active image area, we can still see the square because our new layer is transparent. 
Let's make the elliptical marquee tool active over in the toolbox. The rectangular marquee is still active because we used it to make our square. Both the rectangular and elliptical marquee tools share that same space in the toolbox. So to make the elliptical marquee tool active, we have to choose it from down in the tool options by clicking on it down there. So I'll do that. And now in the toolbox, it shows that the elliptical marquee tool is active. Let's move the cursor over the upper left corner of the blue square. And just like we did to constrain the rectangular marquee to a square, we can hold down the shift key to constrain the elliptical marquee to a circle. So I'll press and hold the shift key. And starting in the upper left corner of the square, I'll click and drag diagonally down and to the right until the cursor is over the bottom right corner of the square. Then I'll let go of the mouse button and also the shift key. Now we have a selection of a perfect circle, and it's about the same size as our square. Next, we'll fill it with green. Go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Selection by clicking on it. The Fill dialog box appears. From the Use field, choose Color by clicking on it. And the Color Picker appears again. This time we want green, so we want to make sure that the red and blue boxes are set to zero and that the green box is set at 255. The red box is already at zero, so I'll click once in the blue box and type zero to change that to zero. Next, I'll click inside the green box to highlight that, and I'll type 255. Up near the top of the color picker where it says New, we can see we have a preview of the green. I don't want the green to be quite that bright, so instead of having the box for green set at 255, I'm going to change it to 180. So I'll click in there again, and then type 180. Looking at the preview in the color picker, I find that green is a little easier on the eyes. Now I'll click OK to close the color picker and accept the change, and then click OK in the fill dialog box to close that. Our selection is filled with the green that we chose. Let's deselect by pressing Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. Next, we can change the name of the layer. First, double click on the default name in the Layers panel. Then type green circle. Press enter or return to complete the name change. Now we just have to make the red triangle and we're done. I'll go through this a little quicker since some of it is repetitive. First, let's add a new layer to the layers panel. Next, we can use the polygonal lasso tool to make our triangle. There's three different lasso tools that share the same spot in the toolbox. It's the spot that's located right below the move tool. So whichever tool is there, click on it. In my case, that's the regular lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool isn't round like the regular lasso tool. It has some sharp angles. I need to make it active by going down to the tool options and clicking on it from there. So I'll do that. The way this tool works is that you click a series of points and it connects those points with a line to define the shape of the selection. To close the selection, you can click over your first point again and you'll know you're over it when a tiny circle appears next to your cursor. Before we start making the triangle, I'm going to change my cursor to a crosshairs. Right now, the cursor looks like the polygonal lasso icon. I find that it's easier for me to be accurate if I use a crosshairs instead. With any selection tool active, if you turn on caps locks on your keyboard, the cursor changes to a crosshairs. So I'll turn on my cap locks now by pressing it and you can see that my cursor changed. Now when I click the mouse button, the polygonal lasso will add a point right from the center of the crosshairs. Let's start at the top, and we'll have to kind of eyeball the center, but you can kind of see where it is at the top of the circle there. So I'm going to click once there to add my first point. Now I'll move my cursor towards the bottom left of the square. As I do, you can see a line appear from our first point where we clicked. When we get to that corner, let's click again to add another point there. Now let's move the cursor over to the bottom right of the square. 
A little trick is that you can make a line perfectly straight if you hold down the shift key as you drag out your line. See how right now my line goes from our last point to where the cursor is? Well watch what happens when I hold down the shift key. Now my line goes straight across from my last point even though the cursor is up higher. I'll keep holding down the shift key and bring the cursor over to the right edge of the square and then click. That added a new point at that corner. Now you can let go of the shift key. To close the selection, just move your cursor towards where we made the first point, which was at the top center. You'll know when you're over it because, as I mentioned earlier, a little round circle appears and also the icon changes back into the polygonal lasso icon. Right now I'm over my first point, so I'm going to click again to close the selection. And now we have a selection in the shape of a triangle. Let's make it red. Go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Selection. From the dialog box, click on Color to bring up the color picker. And this time we want 255 in the red box and 0 in the green and blue boxes. So I'll click inside the red box and type 255 and then I'll click inside the green box and type 0. And then I'll click OK to close the color picker and I'll click OK to close the fill layer dialog box. Finally, we'll deselect by pressing Command or Control D. I'm gonna name that last layer to red triangle. And then hit enter or return accept it. And that's it. We have three different shapes, each on its own layer. Now you can use the Move tool to kind of separate those shapes and move them around in the document if you want. And use this document to try out some of the lessons in this layers course.